Hey, welcome back to Frosthaven. I am no fisherman, but it looks kind of like there might be a lot of stuff down here underneath this derelict elevator. Uh, maybe the reason it was harder than the mission of the Spire was that it is just more like advanced, difficult stuff than the Spire was. Who knows? Uh, maybe something to do with plus two difficulty balancing. Anyway, I want to retire some characters. That's what we are working on. And Achilles Tamir here needs to kill two robotic bolt shooters. And then we'll be able to retire. And at the end of last mission, we were told that if we headed this way toward the, what is this called, rusted tunnels, uh, we might find more robots, so I went this way, and there are robots here. This is a linked mission from last mission, so I haven't been back to town. I haven't leveled up. I haven't added any perks. Uh, I could have if I got some, but I only completed one check mark worth of combat goals last mission. Last mission was a bit rough. <laughs> um, actually, did I even complete that? You know, I, I, I was wrong. I thought that I did, but... I needed to end the mission with less than 3 HP on my Bone Shaper, and I ended it with 0, which I think doesn't count. So <laughs> so actually, I think I <laughs> achieved 0. Um, hopefully this one will be better. This is just a more normal scenarios complete with all enemies and are dead kind of thing. Although, if you look at the map layout, um, we spawn here, and there's a room there and a room here, which is a... I guess an interesting little wrinkle. So maybe I'll have to go in here and then clear it out and then come back and go in there. I do have my Deathwalker with the ability to teleport us between shadows. So probably I will just leave a shadow here, head through, clear all this out, and then teleport the team to this shadow to keep going. That seems like the faster way to do it. I could probably delete this text now and I'll read you some mission introduction. After leaping off the ruined elevator, you discover that the metal walkway that saved your life leads directly to a door with a flashing red light. The security system is still in effect, and you might as well dismantle it while you search for your another way out. Your footsteps clang softly against the metal path, echoing into the vast nothingness. It isn't long before you arrive at the edge of the cavern and find the entrance to a tall, narrow tunnel. The tunnel's walls have been carefully carved out and reinforced with thick bars of heavy iron, all of which are coated in rust. The red light hangs only a short distance within, a single blinking orb mounted onto a wall, and under its steady flash you can make out the shapes of some sort of creature. They're moving slowly about in the low gloom, almost as if they're searching for something. You realize only too late that the thing they're searching for is you. One of them, a stout metallic body, stops and peers in your direction. Its glassy eyes catch the flashing glow from above, and an instant later the tunnel is filled with light. Dozens of red lamps lining the walls burst to life and dye the room in a sharp scarlet fluorescence. In the new light, you can see the tunnel clearly, and it is packed with mechanical guards. Several are already waiting on the steel walkway, and more are beginning to emerge from adjoining tunnels. Flame and sword and gun barrels swing outward, and the machines begin to advance. Uh, we have met all of the things that we are fighting before at this point. Flaming blade spinners, robotic bolt shooters, ruined machines. We can also, if you look at the scenario key here, it says which um, terrain items there are. So I know that if I go through the doors, there won't be tons and tons and tons of stuff in the way. There's a treasure chest somewhere too. So uh, arrow root and arrow vine rather and rock root, I think are the names of those herbs. And I think I have both of those. Oh, I don't have arrow vine. Okay, so it would be nice to put as many uh, loot pickups onto my Bone Shaper as possible. If I can get like 10 loot pickups, that's more than a 50% chance of being able to retire my Bone Shaper at the end of this mission. Already two here. All right, anyway, uh, I already grabbed some cards for round one. We've got a hallway, we've got some blade spinners here, and some robotic bolt shooters at the back. The bolt shooters... As I remember, uh, shoot lots and lots and lots of targets, basically, as do these. So my thought was it would kind of make sense to put a one character kind of up front so they can only shoot at one thing. 
and then have the rest of the team back here for a bit and then advance forward more slowly. So Muckduck's going to go um, get attacked for a lot of damage and, and hopefully not die. Uh, I also, because I'm anticipating this to be a much less frantic mission than the last one, I thought it would be a good time to look at some masteries. I'm retiring the characters, but I noted when you retire a character, it has you mark how many masteries you had. So I'm wondering if maybe it matters, like sometime later in the campaign, um, the number of masteries you've achieved affects some sort of building or something like that. So if I can remove seven shadows in one round, I would love to do that. Um, if I can, no, we can't do this. <laughs> if, if I can, never perform move ability or attack with a value less than four and perform at least one move or attack ability each round. I would really like to do that. I actually built my deck with that in mind. Like I don't have draining arrows in it because the attacks uh, wouldn't be permissible. And yeah, we can't do those ones. So mostly I'm trying to do um, a move or attack for four every round and no moves or attacks for less than that. Never perform a move ability or attack with a value less than four. So I think I can perform move ability and not move more than three tiles as long as the ability has a value of four. And then I'm trying to do the thing where I stack up a bunch of shadows. Uh, first thing that happens though, before anything else happens in the mission, is we use Dead on Arrival, uh, gain two experience, channel dark, and summon our Rhea, who has been having a little bit of trouble recently. All right, let's see what the enemies do. We've got bolt shooters. They are shooting at five range. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so if anybody moves forward, they are getting shot. One, two, three, four, five. Wait, that's actually kind of problematic because I want to channel my banner right there. The blade spinners focus on farthest enemy. They make a jump move. What am I reading? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they do what? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Well, that is fascinating. So they are going to basically try to jump over my characters to get to the enemy farthest from them. However, as it stands, there is actually no way for them to do that. Like, they just straight up can't. Um, so they'll focus on a Deathwalker and a Wraith, and there is no tile from which they can attack those characters, and so they're not going to understand any way to approach them, and will just not move. Which means, at the moment, if I don't move forward, I just straight up don't take damage this round, like I'm not being attacked. So, the only downside is I can't really summon my Banner of Strength. If I do summon my Banner of Strength, one, two, three, four, five, it gets shot. It gets shot for three, uh, which is, I mean, it only has four health. I could summon it and, actually, yeah. I'm going to summon it and give it one shield. I might even give it two shield. If I give it one shield, the plus two will kill it, or the crit will kill it. Oh, one shield. So I'm going to summon a banner right here. Puts it in range of this enemy, but nobody else. Uh, and then having done that, gain two experience. And I'm going to throw a javelin. Uh, I guess at this one, since my wraith is also attacking it. Minus one damage. Cancelled out by the banner. That hits for three. Okay, my drifter. So I had been planning on my drifter walking forward, but I've changed my mind. We're going to give the banner another shield. Uh, I'm going to perform the move for four <laughs> on the bottom half of Deadly Shot. Admittedly, I didn't actually move, but... I'm going to perform it anyway. I've just realized something. 
Doesn't this like not work already because I have to never perform one with a value less than four? How do I move four next turn? Huh. I think for this to work, I... Yeah, I would have to do something pretty fancy <laughs> next turn somehow. I'm not really seeing what it would be. So probably I have actually already failed at that mastery. Oh well. Crushing weight is set up. The robotic bolt shooters don't... Oh. They move? Oh, I'm sorry, my bad. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm going to I'm going to stick with what I've done. It's actually I don't think it's that bad. It's pretty bad. Wow, it's a lot worse than I thought. Uh, okay. So, cuz they want to move to have targets. So this is going to move and attack four targets. And then this will move and attack three targets. Oh, it only has a move of one, so it can only move up one. But yeah, my banner is getting attacked three times, which makes me feel better about giving it two shield. Still, though, if they roll above average on their attacks, it's going to just straight up die. Okay, um, cool. So this will shoot first the banner strength minus one damage. Ooh, that's zero. Then it attacks my drifter, or sorry, that's not my drifter, that's my banner sphere. That's a crit miss, that's also zero. Uh, then my drifter, plus zero, set it for three. I'm gonna just use my chain armor. And then also my bone shaper. Four attacks. It rolled very badly. Uh, that means the deck is just full of good cards though. This one moves forward one, attacks my banner, plus zero, so that hits for one. And my banner spear, plus two. That one hits for five. On the bright side, though, we got one of the plus twos out of the deck. I'm gonna block one of those with my uh, heater shield. That means I only kill the banner with a crit here. Banner first, plus zero, hits for one. And Bone Shaper plus one hits for four. There's nothing I can do about that, is there? I can no longer um I can no longer summon a skeleton this turn. I've really been struggling with my summons. Oh well <laughs> that was kinda of move kinda of rude. The blade spinners cannot do anything though. So that part of my turn did work okay. And now my Bone Shaper. If I'd like to move, I can. Oh, first actually my Wraith goes, I guess. I've drawn a crit miss. Okay. If I'd like to move, I can, but otherwise... There isn't much for me to do here. There's just kind of not a lot for me to do here. I guess that's my turn. Yikes. Unpleasant. Um, my Deathwalker is going to play Call to the Abyss and play the bottom half of Lingering Rot, which is in the deck this time. So I have something to do with the bottom half of a card at the start of a fight because... There just isn't that much for me to do a lot of the time, it feels like. Okay, uh, that turn turned out to be very bad. I thought it was going to be fine, and it sure wasn't. I... I'm going to have to work out how to kill these bolt shooters next turn, I think. There should be some sort of way, though.
For those of you who are curious, my banner spear wants to be targeted by attacks from three or more enemies in the same round, which I honestly almost succeeded at right then. Drifter wants to have zero cards in hand each time they rest, which is a little bit tricky and I'll have to pay attention to it. Uh, Bone Shaper wants to move no more than two hexes with each move action, and Death Walker wants 13 or more experience before any bonus scenario experience. I didn't get any that seemed very achievable with my Death Walker, so we'll give this a go, but uh, I don't have high hopes. So I think the plans to kind of just run past these blade spinners and hope they don't kill my banner of strength, which might happen. I have worked out a way to play a turn where my drifter doesn't fail at his mastery quest. So we'll see if I pull it off or not. Anyway, we'll go with a start round and hopefully this is good. Oh, the bolt shooters are not killing me. Well, I appreciate that. The blade spinners, on the other hand, very much are. Going after the Death Walker and Banner Spear. So if my Death Walker moved here, which is what I was planning to do anyway, my Banner Spear comes to here. That controls their turn pretty well, because these aren't attacking me this turn. Uh, these are attacking for three. So if my Death Walker goes one forward. If my Death Walker goes one forward, then both of these want to seek two targets. So they go here. Well, the first one does. And then it kills my Banner of Strength. If my Death Walker went here, and my Banner Spear went here, then it would be fine. Maybe that's what I do. That's doable. All right, I think that's going to be the play. So I'm using the bottom half of Deepening Despair. I am moving out of range of my Banner of Strength, which is too bad, but there isn't a way to keep it alive that I can see, which doesn't require me to move out of range of it. realize that my banner spear is muddling things twice. I was going to use forceful spirits on the robotic bolt shooters, but they're healing themselves for three. So what is the point of attacking them for three? Feels better just to attack the blade spinners, which aren't healing themselves. So, okay, yeah, we'll attack this one for three. Plus one is four. In this one, we will attack and mark the death with disadvantage, plus zero. So that one also takes four. And then in order to not be getting attacked by two things at the same time, moving here, I am, it's kind of awkward, I've decided to use deflecting maneuver here and it's just like wrong because the bottom half head of the hammer muddles things anyway so the top half of this making opponents gain disadvantage against me just doesn't do much um but that's what i picked <laughs> so it doesn't attack with advantage you get a plus one and plus one for each adjacent ally there aren't any but it is a hit for four still pretty good and the bolt shooters go. So the bolt shooters gain a shield and heal themselves. And that's their turn. Bone Shaper goes now. First the Wraith attacks. It's for three. One, two, three. Thanks to Poison and um, Banner of Strength. And then I had, when I clicked on Bone Dagger, kind of thought it was silly. Like, there's no way that this is actually happening. But now that I'm here... Uh, I'm pretty sure that Blade Spinner actually is dying this turn. So we'll add a Curse to the enemy deck. We will play Fell Remedy to heal our banner for two. 
and we will end our turn. And, oh, sorry, we won't end our turn, because the entire point, I'm using Translocation Rod to swap my Drifter and my Deathwalker. And this was kind of the entire point, because my Drifter has to make an attack for four or more this turn, or a move for four or more, and isn't allowed to make a move for four or less. And I don't have a card that moves me for four at the moment, so I have to teleport my Drifter and then make an attack for uh, more than four, which is what I've just done. And now my Drifter, Muckduck, is going to just attack with Fortitude. This is an attack for five. Plus one kills. So it not only kills, but also it procs um, Bone Dagger. So I can immediately play a card from my discard pile to perform a summon action to the card, reducing damage I take by two. Uh, let's summon this. The move for four doesn't seem very relevant given that I'm only allowed to move for two hexes on each turn for my battle goal. Uh, it also generates a shadow. And it advances, can, crushing weight gives me an experience, and succeeds at playing an attack for four or more this turn. And I'm putting Sustained Momentum into play, which says on your next six move abilities, add two move. So now I can also get moves off. And yeah, I should be able to either move or attack on each turn for the rest of the mission, hopefully. Flating Blade Spinner is going to not move because it's already next to his target, and it's going to attack for three with disadvantage. Uh, no reason to use any extra stuff. Three with disadvantage. Minus one or plus one. I'll take the minus one. Manosphere is down to eight health, but eight health isn't that unhealthy, really. It used to be that ten was my max. Something I maybe should have drawn more attention to than I did is I need my Deathwalker to kill two robotic bolt shooters for retirement. So if I can get the last hits on the bolt shooters with my Deathwalker in this room, that would be really nice. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to set up this turn largely. Let's hit start round and see what they're doing. Ooh. Oh. Okay. I mean, they'll have one shield this turn, but they're not attacking me, so it's not that big a deal. The Blade Spinner, meanwhile, it doesn't have Muddle anymore. It is moving and attacking and strengthening itself. Uh, it'll be dead by then. My Bone Shapers minions are going to just run at it and kill it. No problem. Okay, so Robotic Bolt Shooters are done. My Banner Spear is on a quest. to set my Deathwalker's kill up here, basically. So I'm going to grant two allies within three range, moves of three. Put my Banner of Strength here and my Deathwalker here. Uh, and then I'm going to use Driving Inspiration. I'm going to target Robotic Bolt Shooter 2, I think. And it's an attack with advantage. Oh, it's a crit. Uh, so it was an attack for three with a Banner. So it hits for six, minus one shield is five. That's about as well as one can possibly set the Deathwalker up for a kill, I think. Feels like it worked pretty well. Uh, on my Deathwalker's turn, then, I'm going to be removing a shadow underneath me to deal plus one damage with Anger of the Dead and have enough range to actually reach this. And I am attacking with one piercing, so the shield doesn't matter, or four damage. I was basically marking it for death and killing it. Spawns a shadow, uh, which I will put. I think there's fine. I did um, grab the bottom half of Restless Spirits, Restless Spirits, just in case I didn't get the kill. But now that I'm here, I don't really find myself wanting to use it. So, I don't know. I can move the shadow to somewhere else. 
I might just walk away. I'm going to want all this loot to get picked up by my Bone Shaper, so I like specifically don't want to walk to a place that picks up the loot. I'll just walk here for now. I think I want to go through this door next, too. I could open the door. That's... Uh, that's a bit much. <laughs> okay. Um, Drifter's turn. Somebody does have to kill this, but I believe in my bone... Sh I'm just basically trusting that my bone shaper can do it, and if I'm wrong, it's going to be very awkward. Drifter is going to move four and heal self. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to hit Robotic Bolt Shooter 6 for 5 damage. You want to maybe, like, move somewhere else? I don't think so. I think this is fine. So it is for 4. And now my Deathwalker just needs to attack that next turn and deal 2 damage to it. And we have Retirement done, by the way. Just because it's fun, I'm going to write in here. Uh, robotic Bolt Shooter. One out of two. I just... Sometimes data entry is fun. Okay. Uh, Wraith moves up and attacks this Flaming Blade Spinner. Oh, I'm out of range of the banner. Oh god. Okay. Heal, heal, Christmas. Well... I'll take the heals, thank you. I probably don't actually kill it then. Skeleton moves up and attacks. Plus zero, so that's three. I'm going to use Spyglass. And uh, we use Eternal Torment to curse the enemy deck, channel dark, and give this skeleton an attack with advantage. Okay, that's enough to kill. That is fortunate, because he was getting a bit iffy. Um, and then having used Eternal Torment, I could use Putrid Cloud. Like, I think it's pretty good. But I'll just move to... I want to pick up a lot of loot with my Bone Shaper, and I'm only allowed to move two hexes at a time, so... Flaming Blade Spinner is dead. That's the end of round three. Okay, round four here. There's still this bolt shooter with 11 health, which I don't know that I'm actually killing this turn. What are they doing? Having a move for minus one of base movement feels optimistic in the bolt shooter deck. Uh, then they're attacking at four range. Lots of targets going before the bone shaver. Okay, so this probably gets attacks off. Not guaranteed, though. Uh, the first thing my Banner Sphere is doing is I'm going to move here. And, oh, I was going to put my Banner next to it, but if I do, it actually forces it to attack my Banner. Although it's an attack with minus one damage and disadvantage at that point. Maybe that's actually fine. Okay. I also get to move this if I'd like. And then I'm going to use Pinning Charge. So it adds plus one damage for each adjacent ally. So it's hitting for six here, plus Banner. It's actually hitting for seven. Pretty obscene attack. Eight damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, yeah, that's not a terrible turn at all. Drifter goes now. My thought with my drifter had been that I could just kind of pass my turn. I don't know if that's like too cocky. It's certainly a little bit cocky. This does have three attack. I could save myself a lot of health by just like attacking right now. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so I'm just going to attack. Um, I will attack the elite. Try to make sure that one dies. I will heal myself. I will heal myself. I will hit for three. It's dead. Crushing weight advances. 
and that's my attack for four or more this round. I don't have to move, so I won't. Yeah, I'm just not going to play Shockwave. Drifter's done. Deathwalker. Uh, I'm just going to play Fluid Knight. It's an attack for an awful lot, and it didn't crit mess. I can replace the shadow here immediately. Uh, the room's clear. I have finished my retirement quest. Achilles Tamir. You know this is always like right before they die. It's my last day on the job. Oh no. <laughs> Not like this. Good night also rechannels dark and I'm going to prepare to go through this door. There are no robotic bolt shooters left, so the robotic bolt shooters won't do anything. I'm going to have my wreath move toward me. My skeleton will stay there. I have to pick up all this loot with my bone shaper somehow. So I want to use the card that gives a summon a loot ability. Doable. Let's uh, stand here and pick this up first. Uh, also, alternately, I could just immediately pick up Arrowvine, which is the one I'm missing. It's a 1 in 18 chance, at which point I have retirement on XAA12 as well. Is there anything else I would like to do this turn? I can channel Earth if I want. I could also summon another skeleton if I wanted, but I think I'm about to reclaim anyway, so maybe not that much of a big deal. A coin. This is not the 1 in 18 hit, unfortunately. Round 5 plan is to just barrel through the door. Used to be that I'd like wait to rest, but nah. Just go for it. So I'm going to use the bottom half of dual bow to make a move for four. That's my move or attack for four this turn. One, two, three, four. We open the store. And we'll see what's going on. Sure is a lot of enemies. Why is there a B in the middle of those two hexes? Huh. What does this say? I thought it was going to be straightforward. <laughs> Uh, when door one is opened, read 58.2. They're coming from the tunnels. They're coming for the dogs. They're coming for people's pets. Two smaller passageways connect to this main one, and no matter how many machines you strike down, reinforcements emerge a few moments later. You need to cut off their line and you formulate a plan. The main tunnel supports have not aged well. More than once you've accidentally knocked chunks of rust off the metal scaffolding during the fight, and so you suspect that if you can make your way to each of the smaller ingresses, you could smash the metal supports and bring them down, cutting off the MA troops. The large debris has characters times level plus two hit points, so that's 24. It is an enemy to you and an ally to all monsters. When it is destroyed, instead it becomes a wall. Remove all figures, tokens, and tiles occupying B or any hex beyond it, and then place another large debris wall in B. All removed characters become exhausted. At the start of each round, until the large debris in this room is destroyed, spawn one flaming blade spinner at A. It is normal for two characters. Elite each second spawn for three characters, or elite for four characters. Okay. So what is happening here is... I have to kill that. It has 24 health. Until it's dead, we spawn uh, 15 health worth of enemy every turn. So this large debris here is very, very, very high value target, is what I have learned. And perhaps I shouldn't have opened the door yet. <laughs> Let's draw a card for the bolt shooters and for the blade spinners. Blade spinners and bolt shooters. Okay. If they target one enemy with all attacks, 
at five range. Oh god. Um Can my banner spear get in there? Yes. Okay. So I can make it so they all target my banner spear and my banner spear will have two shield and will be okay. Yeah. The flaming blade spinners are going to immediately give themselves two shield after my drifter's turn is done technically, but I mean, nothing else is happening in my drifter's turn. I'm going to move the tokens of my persistent abilities backward one slot on two of them. So the two that I am using. Deathwalker now. Uh, these are my last, yeah, those are my last cards basically. Oh, you know what? I could use a stamina potion and get another card play before my rest. Would that be good? Maybe. This is a cool mission. They're all cool missions, aren't they? What a good game. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to play Eclipse. One, two, three, four, four. One, two, three. I'm gonna work out. I'd kind of like to put all my shadows next to this debris and then weave of anguish it and just get it killed. You cannot poison objectives, unfortunately. It'd also be nice if my Banner Spear could do something this turn. That's not currently happening. Oh well, maybe that's just not happening. We're going to move in, we're going to rechannel Darkness. And I'm going to use Eclipse. Which also regenerates darkness again. Uh, so we're placing three shadows within three range. I need to change my picture in picture. It's going to be a lot less usable now because of the size of the arena all of a sudden. So one, two, I think perhaps one underneath me? No, maybe. I think I kind of need to put a one underneath me. Okay, that's my Deathwalker's turn. We are getting set up. So my Banner Spear is going to move four. One, two, three, four. Uh, and would I like to heal all allies for three? I don't think so. I think I'd rather attack for two. Well... It only heals my Bone Shaper. But it does heal my Bone Shaper. Meaningfully. Okay. Bone Shaper is kind of low. Uh, I take one damage, I get one experience. And I'm going to use, for the first time, Iron Will. Once each scenario during your turn, gain two shield for the round. So that is done. I have two shield for the round. And that's my turn. First thing that happens in the Bone Shaper's turn is my summons move. So my Wraith's moving here and attacking this Blade Spinner. We have healed our Bone Shaper. We have healed our Bone Shaper again. We have hit it for two damage and added a curse to the enemy deck. Then the Skeleton moves here. And then, what's this? Grant one of your summons a movement attack. Transfer essence. I think getting the skeleton into the room is probably a good idea. Alternately, I could move up transfer essence. And actually, the transfer essence... Um, Well, no, I can't. The skeleton's in the way. I was thinking I could poison this and strengthen two of my friends, but not even true. 
not even true. Unless I unsummon my skeleton. I want to unsummon the skeleton. That seems a lot worse than like using the skeleton. All right, let's let's move the skeleton up, and it will attack for two plus zero, so two. And then I also have the bottom half of transfer of essence, which in this case is not doing a tremendously large amount. I'm just gonna move two to here. My banner of strength is a long way away, isn't it? All right, there are three robotic bolt shooters. One of them's an elite, the others are not. They all have three attack. They're all attacking at five range, one, two, three, four, five, and moving, so this can move up first. And they're all attacking one enemy with all of their attacks. You know? I'm gonna play my uh, Bone Shaper's turn differently. <laughs> this is. I don't think I don't think this modifier card mattered. Not relevant. Uh, I'm going to Blinking Cape. I keep forgetting that I have this. I'm gonna put my Bone Shaper in here, and having done that, I can. Well, here I'll just take the plus zero. Or the Wraith instead. So I'll grant my Wraith a movement attack. And then I'll use the bottom half of Transfer of Essence. I'll take two damage. And you will heal for five. Okay. Because I think, like, even with two shield, my Banner Spear might have died there. We will see, I suppose. The robotic Bolt Shooters are going to go now. And we'll see how much damage they deal. So, shooting at our banner spear. I'm not going to bother giving the attacks disadvantage for now, at least. We get four attacks here. Minus one deals zero. Null deals zero. Plus zero um, deals zero. And null deals zero. Okay. <laughs> now, number two. Plus one. So, that does hit. That hits for. Only hit for one. It only hits for one. Plus zero. Uh, nope. 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 Okay. And this one. No. A crit. Okay. So that hits for four. So two. And plus one hits for one. So yeah. If I hadn't added five health, I'd be at, I think, three still. Maybe that was more than I needed to worry about what was going on, but. It felt a little iffy. Uh, I haven't dealt any damage to this debris. Uh, when do the things spawn? At the start of each round. Oh okay, so I'm going to spawn in one of those. The round is starting now. I'll just spawn it now. They're all elites. I just want to make sure that we don't let more stuff run past B here, because I don't want to have to kill more stuff than I need to. I am going to need some rests this turn. Maybe I should have rested before I came through the door. What a thought. Um, yeah, but I didn't. So, we'll go short rest. Presumably on everybody. Losing Shadow Step is okay with me. Losing Life and Death, sure. There are so many attacks that um, blocking damage from one attack doesn't seem like that big a deal. Banner Spear is losing Deflecting Maneuver. All attacks targeting you this round gain disadvantage. Or two shield only applies to ranged attacks. Both of those are kind of good. Both of those are kind of good. Uh, 
Uh... Okay. I think the health that I have is also pretty good. And also, I'm pretty sure there are other cards that are more important to be able to play. All right, let me work out my cards. This is something that I do sometimes with Deathwalker. I don't know if I've done it yet this campaign, but I remember doing it on the tabletop game. Having either Wave of Anguish or Black Barrage to be able to um, use the bottom half of them to move all of your shadows is actually kind of a big, big deal. Like, I can't get these shadows to the debris because I didn't bring those cards on this mission. Uh, we'll work something out, though. Okay, um, quite a lot feels like it's depending on the enemy deck roll here. I have a lot of potions, I have some flexibility and items to work stuff out, and also my turn is just like pretty, pretty good I would say. Okay, the, the Spinta winds want to move five, and all enemies within two range suffer one damage. They don't have fire, and the bolt shooters aren't attacking. I've gotten pretty lucky. They've used this shield and heal self three three times so far in this mission. I appreciate it, uh, especially since I don't really want to have to attack them. Oh, my drifter's moving before my banner spear. I didn't actually realize that. Well, I think I would like to kill this blade spinner. That feels like a good idea. Let's go one, two, three. Just three? I think maybe it's like so. That uses a move. Uh, and then I'm going to... I did have the ability to use Prudent Preparation, but it doesn't do anything here. So I'll just use an attack for four. And attack this Blade Spinner, which is at seven. Crit miss. I guess I want them. Oh well. Um, do I want to poison it? I want to poison it. Okay. The bolt shooters uh, shield themselves and heal. Banner spear goes. I am granting three allies within range of four a move of two. So one of those allies is my banner of strength, which is going to be in range of some people now. Bring my deathwalker forward and... Be getting my bone shaper out of the way. I think my bone shaper is fine right there, actually. It's not intended to be a frontline character, I don't think. There are some cards which are kind of like, hmm, is that for frontline bone shaper? Anyway, uh, I'm going to use driving inspiration. This is an attack for two with advantage. Uh, I do have a banner here. It's going to attack this uh, debris. Plus zero or minus one. All right. One, two, three. Just three. It started at two with a banner. Yeah, okay. Well, not the most damage, but we got started. Uh, Deathwalker goes now. I want that to die, but I don't need it to die to my Deathwalker's turn. Yeah, I'm going to leave my bone shaper to deal with it again, which is like a thing I've done before. 
<laughs> to <laughs> to less than stellar results. Um, and I'm going to use Forceful Spirits here. We are consuming this. We are out of range of the banner, unfortunately. And I have to use my bow in order to get the attack on the debris. So this is an attack for three plus one is four. And then I have another attack, which I'm going to put, I think, into Flaming Blade Spinner 4, maybe? I don't know. It's an attack for 3. So it goes through this shield, okay. Okay, I'll just put it here against the Bolt Shooter. Actually, I kind of like that. Ooh, a curse as well. Um, so for 3, 1, 2, 3, curse the monster deck. I like that because now I can use the bottom half of Restless Spirits. Move a Shadow 4, and if it's... Then in the same hex as an enemy, I can give the enemy three damage, remove the shadow, and gain an experience. By the way, when I use dark with this, I gained an experience as well. And this moves here. This enemy is marked for death and dead, and I will remake the shadow right where it was. Well, I'll move it here. But yeah, that also gives me an experience. I think that is fine. All right, Bone Shaper goes. First thing that happens on my Bone Shaper's turn is the Wraith moves. It's attacking this for three. Plus one is four. One, two, three, four. Uh, then the Skeleton comes in and attacks. That kills. Okay. Well, I hadn't planning it. I hadn't planned on them doing quite that well because I did have like my entire turn basically set up to deal the rest of the damage required. I guess what I can do is I can move my Bone Shaper 2 with the bottom half of Bone Dagger. I'm just going to move here because I need to be picking up loot. I'm going to command the Wretched on my Wraith, bring it in, and have another attack at this Blade Spinner for 2 damage. Uh, bone Shaper summons are really good at sustained damage if they can stay alive, which is... I mean, that's kind of the problem, is that they feel like they just die. Do I maybe want to use an item? I could renew them here, and then I could teleport some people somehow. You know what? I really thought that I was going to block the other blade spinners from getting in, but I'm not. I messed up. Okay. I guess it's a uh, frontline bone shaper then. <laughs> I'm going to use blinking cape. Teleport to here. Somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. Blade spinners go now. They move. Uh, as much as five. This one's moving here. Whoops. One, two, three, four, five. This one's moving there. Okay, I guess this is not really working, is it? Maybe we maybe we move that out of the way. And they're all dealing one damage to all enemies within one range. So this one takes three. Or within two range rather. This takes one, this takes one, this takes one. Ouch. Um, but a very, like, worthwhile thing for the Bone Shaper to achieve all the same. I, yeah, I just need to gum up, gum up space here, do lots of tanking, not let enemies through, and destroy this debris. And we should be okay, I think. I gotta rest with my drifter. If I'm going to complete my mastery, I just can't long rest because it would mean that I... Whoa, I could long rest. No, I'm wrong. I could long rest. I could move my drifter with my banner spear while he was long resting. Uh, I don't want to lose dual bow because I want to use the bottom half of this card to get my persistent abilities back to square one, probably after this room, so I'm going to reroll that. And I will lose Vile Assault instead, which is too bad. That's a pretty good card.
I want to acknowledge that this is a little, um, a little cheaty. We're stretching the rules. I'm going to use Stamina Potion. Um, I want to see that last round my Deathwalker used Stamina Potion, which I think is like, there isn't really anything remarkable that's happened that would change my thinking. Um, but I just like wasn't thinking ahead as far as I would have liked to be. I want to get Restless Spirits back so I can play it again. By the way, I completely forgot that these have retaliate. But now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know that it's mattered much. I think I, I should have been retaliated against once on my Drifter. And maybe once on my Death Walker, I attacked at range with disadvantage. No, I didn't. I attacked the Bolt Shooter. The Skeleton killed it. I think nobody else has, like, melee attacked them. Which is surprising, because I killed a lot of them already. All right. Uh, I think I have a turn almost. Almost. Okay. The name of the game here in round seven is alpha strike i guess i want to i want to kill this it has 17 health these have 15 each and if i kill this both of them die as well as that so like it's just very 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 valuable to destroy the pre two here i have some people attacking it for sure if the blaze winners want to move and attack as it stands they wouldn't really do anything and the bolt shooters want to attack pretty hard. Yeah, that, that is going to be an attack. I doubt I will kill the elite bolt shooter before it does that. Also, this blade spinner is like probably going to hit four things. Um, fortunately, it's attacking for minus one damage. Also, fortunately, uh, all of my people are going before any of theirs. So... Oh, again, my Drifter moves before my Banner Spear. Probably fine. Probably okay. Uh, yeah. So, I'm moving here. That advances this. I really think we got into three experience so far. I guess so. And I'm using the top half of Bloodletting as well. Attack for five, hits for six. My drifter's turn done. I get a loot. There's a coin. Not bad. That's what I want Muck Duck to be picking up. Oh, and my Death Walker is moving before my Banner Sphere as well. Well, my entire turn was kind of built around the idea that my Banner Sphere would go first and bring the banner in, but oh well. Uh, I'm going to hit this with my Shadow with Fluid Knight. Channel's dark. Attacks for. Five. Wow. It's been a while since I got a good crit. Like, that's a really good crit. It now hits for 10. It's at 11 health. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move three shadows on the ground. I'm going to move the shadow underneath my bone shaper into it and blow the shadow up. And that destroys this debris. Okay, what does that do again? It caves in the tunnel. It becomes a wall. Remove all figures, tokens, and tiles occupying B. Or any hex beyond it, then place another large debris wall in B. All removed characters become exhausted. Okay. Uh, is the tabletop simulator set up to do that for me? No. So I'm going to have to go find a large debris wall.
here it is. So this is dead. This is dead. This is dead. This goes here. And that's all. Uh, everything is looking a lot less threatening all of a sudden. Good work. Uh, Achilles Tamir. And get rid of these. I will not be picking up the loot pouches from them. That's just not that big a deal to me right now, though. Um, so it would be kind of cool if I could kill this robotic bolt shooter, but I don't feel like it's very plausible. I don't know. I have an attack for four here. I can't make my wraith attack it though. That's kind of the the key thing, I suppose. I wonder if the enemy died. Or not. Have an if an enemy has died this round. I guess I can give the wraith a move. So I could like move the wraith here and then I can command the wraith to attack it. I'm pretty sure it's better just to attack the blade spinner. It's at nine health. The nice thing about attacking it is maybe the skeleton doesn't die. So let's check a javelin at it. Oh my god, it's another crit. Eight damage. It's all coming up me. And then I want to give two allies within three range moves of three. I guess I will move my skeleton up. And... Because my bone shaper can't move more than two tiles per turn, I will... Help my bone shaper move a little bit, I guess. Look at all that loot lying on the ground. I do believe I have the card that lets us summon root for me. Summon five loot tokens and or uh loot five loot tokens and one go. Okay, pretty good banister turn. Bone shaper first up is the wraith. Extra plus one, that's dead. And then the skeleton moving in, attacking for two, heals my bone shaper, and hits for two. Now. Oh, my bone shaper actually gets a move. So now I can heal myself for two with this, and I can grant a summon and attack for plus one, so the skeleton it, uh, hits for five. Pretty good. And yeah, I guess it's my turn. The robotic bolt shooter, unfortunately, it does get to shoot at me. So it's attacking three targets. It's attacking for five. It has to attack this shambling skeleton. It's with disadvantage against that one. So that kills one of my people. And then it attacks two other targets of my choice. Um, within four range. My drifter seems to be at 10. It's for five, though. I'm going to use um, crude hide armor here. We're going to attack with disadvantage on my banner spear. It's a crit fail. All right, cool. That's the value of hide armor, I guess. Um, got a healing potion and stuff. Yeah, okay. I'll go against the drifter. Plus one. So that hits for six. Ouch. Ouchie. That's the end of round seven. All right, here's round eight. We are going to... Finish killing the last enemy in this room, hopefully. Oh, it's going quite quickly. Oh, maybe we're not. <laughs> um, the thought, though, was that I could just kill it with Anger of the Dead. So it's only an attack for three, though. And I can't make that more.
<sighs> Unless I don't use this teleport. I keep on forgetting I have haunting dreams. I bet there have been uh, uh, like opportunities to use that in this mission. Well, uh, I'm going to hit it for three. So I'm going to consume this shadow to get one more damage into this attack. Mark it for death, and I got pulse one and curse. It dies though, so I don't get the curse. Makes a new shadow for me. And then uh, my big plan here was to use Deepening Despair, but I'm kind of feeling like, why? Why not just like go pick up the wheel? Actually, I'm going to change my mind. This room is clear. We're healthy. We have a lot of cards left. Let's just make sure we get all of the loot on the mission. I can get all the loot on the mission, but let's like make sure we get a lot of it. I got the three coin again. Nice. I guess a problem with this is Drifter. Drifter needs to like use these continuous abilities every turn. But I did bring Relentless and one other card like it, so I should be able to keep going. Robotic Bolt Shooters are all clear. I'm going to not have the Wraith move toward me, and then my move for two with Bone Shaper is just to here. That is fine. Is it fine? I think it's fine. <laughs> uh, do I want to summon a Skeleton? Not really, not right now. Eight, ten... I could summon a skeleton, it wouldn't slow down my... It wouldn't speed up my exhaustion at all. Okay, so actually I'm going to move here, I guess, then. Because next turn I can use this to loot with the skeleton. Which means I shouldn't have put my Deathwalker there, because the skeleton's getting all the loot anyway. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's officially too late to change that after I've already seen what the loot is one experience and my banner spear i did have a like move for and run away kind of thing set up here yeah that's fine i'm gonna move here i don't think my bone shaper i can pick up literally all of the loot so there's a loot token here which i'll give to my banner spear rechannels air and i will use at all costs plus one experience you heal for three we heal for three, we heal for three, I take three damage. Now, uh, yeah, I'll have to work out how to get my Banner Spear's health back again. Should be doable though. Okay, definitely going to be a little bit of shuffling here. So we're starting around nine. And yeah, just like moving around a lot. Drifter, I'm going to go move one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's move up here. Why not? And then move the character token to my persistent abilities back one. So this moved up for the move. And then we move both of them back one. Still only up four experience. Bone Shaper. I don't want to move my summons. I'm going to give my skeleton a loot. What you got for me? Nope. We're still looking for exactly one uh, potion resource. Uh, that was the bottom half of my card. I can channel Earth if I feel so inclined. I guess I will. Uh, Deathwalker. I'm just moving three. it. Banner Spear. So I already got the Banner Spear through the door, but now I'm coming back again. With the point being to help my Bone Shaper get to where I want my Bone Shaper to be. And that was the end of that turn already. I am going to use, like, I don't know, 
four turns or something to move around here, but that's okay. I think I'll take a long rest with my Banner Spear, and then Bone Shaper, though, I think I'm just going to short rest. Deathwalker I could long or short rest. I don't have, like, strong opinions. We go long rest on Deathwalker. So, short rest, Bone Shaper. Oh, uh, end round. Uh, that's the one I need. That is the one that picks up all the loot for me. And then we'll declare a long rest with our banner spear, declare a long rest with our death walker, end of round, they will get their stuff back. Bone Shaper, meanwhile, is going to give a summon a move and give a summon a loot. And my drifter, we will go I will move four with the bottom half of dual bow and move the token backwards with the top half of um, continuous health. I won't make the attack, obviously, but I do get to move the character token back after I move for four. So this is simultaneously a very uneventful turn. My move for four is standing still. I move this forward one and then back one. That's, that's my drifter's turn. Um, it's simultaneously an uneventful turn and a very eventful turn because my wraith moves here and then I grant it loot. And I get to pick up five loot tokens and it feels not impossible here that this is retirement for XAA12. There are 13 cards left in this loot deck, so the chance is five out of 13, I guess. I'm going to shuffle it just to make it more exciting for some reason. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. No luck. No dice. What? Usually it lets me delete these. All right, well, whatever. Um, damn, I have eight loot cards picked up already. There are only eight left in the loot deck, so I'll try to get some of those in the next room, I guess. We take a look at my Banner Spear and Deathwalker and work out, obviously we get all these back, but I have to work out what card I'm losing. So... With Banner Spear, I lost tip of the spear, uh, which is fine. The enemies here don't have shield for the most part, so I don't think it's important. Oh, uh, I guess I picked up loot with my Banner Spear and never grabbed it. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, that would have been very upsetting if it was the potion resource. Um, Call of Doom was sitting here on the table, and so I guess... I never put it in my hand or something. I don't really know why it was there, but I have the right number of cards not in my hand for the mission, so it was meant to be in my hand. So I've decided just to lose it. I'm not sure if I like didn't have it for my first few turns or something. I feel like I played it. Anyway, regardless, I decided to lose it since it was over there, and I don't know how, and it just seemed like a simple way to resolve the fact that it was out of bounds. My Drifter is also going to need a short rest here. Losing Dual Bow, that's what I got last time. I, I'm pretty sure that I want to be able to move the token on two of my persistent abilities backward four slots, so I'm going to reroll that into Relentless. That's okay. I don't think I'm opening the door this turn, but I think I'm planning to open the door next turn, start of round 12. Okay, plotting forward toward the next room. I'm glad the first room, well, the first two rooms went so well because it's letting me be like a little greedy maybe in how long I'm spending 
reorganizing here before the final room of the mission. Just gonna adjust my picture in picture. Oops. The locket, I guess. Uh so my banner spear is moving through the door, then granting two allies within two range moves of two. So the banner moves up, the bone shaper moves up, and then I'm just gonna cast regroup on myself. Gives me a regen, which should help a decent bit. Deathwalker is going to teleport to a hex adjacent to a shadow. And then I'll use the top half of Deepening Despair to channel Dark, I guess. Why not? Uh, Bone Shaper is... Oh, I thought I could target you, but I can't. That's fine. I'll... One, two, three, four, five. Kill Banner Spear for five, and then also channel Earth. Skeleton moves toward me. And my Drifter is moving this back and net negativing on sustained momentum. That counts as a move for four again. It's funny how I'm like completing this quest in a mission where for the most part it feels like I'm kind of not doing anything. Anyway, round 12. Round 12, I think I'm opening a door. Feels like it's time. So, here goes nothing. Uh, Drifter is using Shockwave. This is a move ability. It's going to be for five, which means if I don't like what's through the door, I can run away from it. But I imagine I'll keep going forward. Uh, yeah, this looks like the same sort of idea. Ooh, there's a treasure chest. Also, there are seven enemies in this room. All right, what's the, what's the game say about this? Read 61.2. Oh, this time it doesn't explain things to me. I guess they expected me to open this door first. The large debris has the same amount of HP as the last one. When it is destroyed, it becomes a wall on hex D. So... I can move to the chest 74, and it is like okay if one of my characters exhausts. The only thing is I can't have my drifter exhaust, or I will fail at my goal. Unless he exhausts on the last round of the mission. We'll see what ruined machines and bolt shooters are doing. Bolt shooters are moving and making an attack with piercing. Awkward. Five range on that. And ruined machines are moving and attacking. They move one. They're not moving far. But they are moving a little bit. I do have a move for five with my drifter, in theory. I have moved one so far, so I have four left. How does this move? Two. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, it attacks four enemies. Oh, it has piercing against my wraith. So I probably want to give it four other people to attack by the time that it comes time for it to attack. Kind of hard to do. Maybe impossible to do. I can I can use translocation rod to keep my wraith alive. Actually, I'll translocate my banner spear in. Yeah, that seems sensible. So uh, I'm still trying to work out: does my drifter move in or not? Next turn, I definitely want my drifter to like get in here to stop these from moving forward. I wonder if my drifter could just run to the treasure and then run out again. No, I'd get surrounded. As long as I don't kill this before, I think I'm going to run my drifter to the treasure. Oh my god. Is that real? <laughs> um, 
No, because I'm at six health. I need to wait until I get a heal first. Almost real, though. I mean, maybe like next turn. One, two, three. The other way to get to the treasure is can I move a shadow a long way? I can move a shadow four hexes. So probably my Deathwalker picks up the treasure, and the way I do that is I move a shadow for four hexes and then teleport to it. So set up a shadow like here, one, two, three, four, teleport to a tile next to it. That is not impossible at all. Okay, but for my Drifter, uh, is there much reason to give this an attack for plus one? I don't see it. So I'm just going to move my drifter back, and yeah, that's the room. Uh, there are two ruined machines spawning down here every turn. I don't feel like ruined machines are very scary, though. So I don't know. Maybe I should be more afraid of them than I am, but I'm just kind of not. Well, we have a bone shaper moving. So first the Wraith goes, it will move here and make an attack. Plus one, cool. And the Skeleton goes, and then my Bone Shaper goes. I'm just going to move two with the bottom half of Putrid Cloud, and then I'm going to heal for six with Fell Remedy, which I deliberately set up next turn. Look at that. Sometimes it pays to play ahead, plan ahead. All right, robotic bolt. Oh, and then I, sorry, I also am going to translocation rod to trade my wreath and my banner spear. Keeps the wraith alive a bit longer. It does also kind of make it so it's not in combat anymore. Neither this skeleton. That's fine. Robotic Bolt Shooter. So this wants four targets. Is that right? Yeah, it wants four targets. So it's going to move forward two. One, two, three, four, five. And now has all of its targets. First shot's at the Drifter. It's attacking for two. Minus one. Uh, next, Banner Spear. Missed. Deathwalker. One. And... Bone Shaper, three. Yeah, kind of rude. Uh, the other ones... Is there only one other one? It moves forward, two. Oh yeah, there really are a lot of Ruined Machines in this room and not a whole lot else, huh? Okay, Banner Spear's turn. This does happen before the Ruined Machines go. I regen. First thing. I can grant three allies within four range a move of two. And then heal everyone. I'll definitely heal everyone. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I take three and I'm no longer regenning. Uh, and get an experience. Grant three allies within four a move of two. I'm wondering if I just send in my drifter now. Probably not. Probably I bring you forward, you forward, and you forward. The big thing in this room is I have to deal 24 damage to this objective, and then once I do, I kind of have one. Like, cleanup after that will be pretty easy. How much loot is left? There's seven loot cards. So I could try to stall a bit so that I can get seven loot. If you compare the situation I'm in now to the situation I was in last mission, when I was getting close to the end, um, the number of cards that my characters have is just, like, very high. Like, I I feel kind of like I could do another 16 enemies or something. So... 
Yeah, I don't know. What's my Deathwalker doing? Angry dead. Anger of the dead. I could move in and poison something as well. I think I'll just chuck my uh, shadow at this enemy. So I'm going to consume the shadow. Gives me one experience. Makes the attack go a bit further. Oh god. Okay. We've recovered. Um, and... We are attacking for four. I have crit missed. Fair enough. Well, <laughs> ruined machines go now, so they all move one toward me. Like so. This can't move closer to me. So it won't. Like so. Like so. Like so. And that's the end of the round. Start of next round, two elite ruined machines spawn at sea. And this happens every every round. The thing is, like, they are melee enemies for the most part, and they don't deal very much damage. So my plan is just to stand in front of them and have them be unable to do anything. And I think that plan is not uh far fetched. With that in mind, the hardest thing feels like it's making sure I pick up the treasure, but again, I think my Deathwalker can probably get a shadow there and then teleport to it. And if my Deathwalker then dies afterwards, it doesn't care that much. It's just not a big deal. All right, let's work out round 13. We are round thirteening, thirteening, meaning round thirteening. Ruined machines are oh, they're moving quite far. The robotic bolt shooters are attacking a lot and also moving up one. So this is not what I wanted. I don't want all the ruined machines to get out into here and make it hard for me to actually get to the debris. But I'm not sure what I'm going to do about it. Kind of feels like the cat's out of the bag on that one already at this point. Does that change for my picture in pictures again? So my drifter is moving forward four and then grabbing a shield. And retaliate. That's okay. One, two, three, four. Shield and retaliate for the turn. Sustained momentum moves up again. Next turn I'm going to have to stand still and make a melee attack, I guess. Drifter done. Next up, Banner Spear. I was actually considering, do I want a Banner of Hope? Like, I have the cards available. I could play one. And it feels like, um, like enemies are going to hit all sorts of things. So the healing for one every round feels pretty relevant. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's have two banners. Why not? I don't know if I've had two banners in play at the same time yet this campaign. Then I'll also use Javelin, which is in tech for four on this ruined machine. Move down to seven. Uh, you know what? I'm going to hit it for another two with Explosive Vial, which puts it down to five. That's my Deathwalker's turn for three. Sure, I'll hit it again. So I'm going to use Renewing Potion to get Explosive Vial back and hit it for another two. Okay, Deathwalker now. Hopefully. Can move in... I'm attacking without the banner. 
so that my skeleton can move in. That's okay. It's already marked for death. Honestly, why didn't I just let it attack? Like, what's it even doing? Yeah. <laughs> I've changed my mind. Give me, give me my potions back. Uh, I'm just going to attack it for three here. I moved with the bottom half of Fluid Knight, and now I'm attacking with Restless Spirits, which is hitting for four and applying a curse to the monster deck. So I was actually, like, I was using an item to stop my Deathwalker from taking, like, I don't know, how much damage. Oh. The Ruined Machines are not doing what I thought they were doing. They are poisoning and immobilizing everything within one range. After moving. That is very different from what I thought they were doing. Okay, well... <laughs> what order did they go in? Is one on the board? It is. It's moving three. Two is also moving three. Is three on the board? Yes. It is immobilizing and poisoning my Deathwalker. Is four on the board? Yes, it's moving here. It is immobilizing and poisoning my Drifter. It's five on the board? No. Yes. Moves here. That's not closer to this tile, is it? Actually, it is. Moves there. Then seven moves here. Yeah, so this is exactly what I didn't want to happen. They are all through the door. Okay. Fortunately, they didn't really deal any damage or anything. Although, ooh, poison. Poison's bad. Poison is bad. That's kind of undeniable. Uh, okay. Robotic Bolt Shooters, this one will move here. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, it takes four attacks. First one's against my Drifter, who has a shield and a retaliate, but it's not doing much here, is it? Plus zero. It's poisoned, so three. Uh, next, my Deathwalker, crit. That hits for six. Ouch. Um, next, my Banner of Hope, plus zero. And my Banner Spear, plus one. Good grief. And then this uh, cannot move forward, so it only gets to attack my Drifter, fortunately. Plus zero. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that was really painful. <laughs> that's, a, that's a large number of enemies. Good grief. Uh, what's the range on this? It's one. I'm going to... I have a reinforced shield. I'm going to stop one of the... one of the statuses. Trying to work out which one. I'm stopping poison. I should have done that earlier. I just kind of forgot that I could do it. Okay. Bone Shaper's turn. Wraith moves up and attacks. Plus zero. And then Shambling Skeleton moves up and attacks. All right, we got a kill. Then my Bone Shaper heals one from the Banner of Hope. And I can give a summon and attack, but it's out of range. Or I can Bone Dagger, but I can't actually move. Can I teleport somewhere? No. Um, maybe what I have to do is pass turn. Alternately, I could unsummon my skeleton so I could walk forward. What other cards do I have? Mm, it's a rest next turn. Oh, my skeleton's already in my discard pile. <laughs> At least I hope so. 
Oh, my skeleton's in my hand. Okay. Yeah, that should not be in my hand. Um, I mean, it's kind of fine that it is because I didn't play it, but that's definitely not where the card should be. That seems like it happens a lot. Also, Commander Wretched was in the air. I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> Why was it flying? How, how did it start flying? Um, so there is eight cards here. So if I unsummon my skeleton, I get five turns before the next time I have to rest. That does have some value. And it gets me through the door. And I guess I don't get to use the top half of this to channel dark because I would have to burn the card as well. So that is the end of round 13. There are a lot of enemies. Um, I'm going to short rest on my bone shaper. Is this only my... There are two cards lost. I'm confused. I'm confused. There are five cards here. There are two cards lost. There's one there. How can there be 11? I have one too many cards. If I unlocked three cards, do all of my characters have one card more than they should? They're all level three, right? At level two, they got one. At level three, they got one. You have one, four, 10, 11. That's right. You have two, seven, eight, 10, what? 5, 8, 10, 12. Okay, good. 2, 7, 8, 10. Good. So why do you have one more card? 3. Is something wrong in here, maybe? What? Somehow I copied Command the Wretched. I guess that's why it was flying. <laughs> okay, well, that was an interesting investigation, which uh, felt a little bit frustrating. Now I've found out that I actually don't get an extra turn out of um, this short rest, but I feel like at this point I'm kind of committed to it. Okay, uh, Banner Spear also needs to either short or long rest. I think short rest. I do not have anywhere near as many cards on my Banner Spear. I move two and grab my allies too. No, I don't need that. I need to first move my allies through the door and then I need to get through the door or maybe even the other way around. Yeah, I think the other way around, actually. I go through the door first, and then the next turn, I get my allies through the door. Um, fortunately, the poison on my Deathwalker is going to immediately fall off when I take a turn, which will hopefully be really soon. Uh, I can lose Anger of the Dead, I think. Okay, let's work out what cards I am using for round 14. Also worth noting, when this enemy died, I get a shadow. Kind of a big deal. I... What? Didn't I delete this? Why is it here again? Okay, now I have 8, 11, 12. Oh, that's the right number. Oh, maybe there were two copies of it. Very confusing. X-Files team music kind of stuff right there. So before the round starts, we spawn in two more ruined machines. We are 100% spawning in 26 HP worth of enemy every turn. They have that intent where they all blow up. Maybe they'll just do that and all die. That'll be kind of fun. We'll see what happens this round. If the attack was performed, Ruined Machine suffers one damage. Oh, they're standing still. Well, that's good. That means that we don't get more of them passing the halfway point of the room. Bolt thrower, throwers, well, the bolt shooters are not doing anything as well. 
Okay. So, yeah, that seems quite good. Bolt shooters aren't doing anything. Ruined machines are standing still. Okay, so the bolt shooters all have one shield. My death walker. Uh, I'm going to make an attack with crushing weight. This is an attack for five with pierce. Healed myself. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's down to eight health. I'm not going to use the bottom half of dual bow just yet. Uh, it doesn't look like I need to move a whole lot, so we can mostly just stand still and hit them, I think. Next up, Banner Spear. Uh, I'm going to walk through this door. I'm going to leave the loot for my Bone Shaper to pick up, and I'm going to chuck a javelin at our friend the Ruined Machine. Oh, I heal for one at the start of the turn. Plus zero, that's three. Okay, now my drifter's turn is certainly a thing. I'm no longer poisoned. You're no longer immobilized. My drifter is still immobilized, so I can't move. But what I can do is I can move a shadow. So I'm going to move a shadow up to four hexes. I want to put it here. And then I am going to use the top half of Lingering Rot. To experience, burns the card. It attacks all adjacent enemies and poisons some. Although they're all immune to poison, <laughs> which is very upsetting. But still, I am attacking all adjacent enemies. So I'm going to start with... They're all attacks for three. I'll start with this one. Critmas, okay, that's fine. Uh, that one does get poisoned. Then here, plus one. Here, plus two. Here, here. And I'm also going to mark this one for death. It feels like maybe not a terrible turn? I don't know. It's still not dead, is it? <laughs> oh, and then the shadow's gone. But when it dies, I can make a shadow here, then one, two, three, four, and teleport to it the next turn. So that's okay, I guess. This is the only ruined machine that's moving. It represents the entirety of the enemies. Offense this turn. It's attacking for plus two. Fits for five. And immobilizes again. Uh oh. If I'm immobilized, I can't move, and there's nothing in melee range of me. Do I need to I don't think I can block that. I used my shield already. Did I just fail my quest? What I can do is I can command a move with my banner spear after the drifters turn in the round in that way we do get a move i also have to think about the fact that i'm at like five health <laughs> probably like i'm very nearly just dead this suffers one damage because its attack happened and my bone shaper moves uh my wraith wants to attack the robotic bolt shooter so i guess it will I'll heal my Bone Shaper, it will crit. It will crit for one damage. Uh, and then my actual Bone Shaper. I think the play is to just give the Wraith an attack against this Ruined Machine, probably. With this. Um, so no curse because it dies. I do, however, get a shadow.
which I'm putting here. It'd be such a good time to have that uh, attack that does the spinny muddle. I sure didn't deal a single point of damage to the objective yet. Can I move forward to... And I guess call that around. I do have some ranged attacks. I'm, I'm like deliberately making this harder than it needs to be because I'm trying to get extra out of the mission, but maybe at some point sometime soon I need to just buckle down and actually win. Do I want to long rest with my drifter then? No, my drifter has to go before my banner sphere. My banner sphere is currently going at 17. Okay, so I've got to go pretty early in the turn then. Uh, I didn't want to lose dual bow, but I think at this point I'm just going to. Feels like the rest of my attacks will, or the rest of my turns will mostly be melee attacks probably. Okay, start of round 16. The first thing that happens is even more. I think there is a limit. You can only have 12 of them. We're kind of approaching that limit right now. We'll see what they do. Um, start round. The ruined machines are, oh, they're making a big move. Well, I just have to get in their way, I guess. The bolt shooters are just doing a shooty. There are still two of those alive. It would be nice to kill them. Because they are, like, the majority of the damage that the enemies are doing, actually. How good am I at killing them at the moment? Did I kill this one? It's only at 10. Looks like I should be able to. Unfortunately, Fluid Knight can't hit it with how I set this up. So, Fluid Knight could hit this one. Yeah, doesn't really feel compelling though. So, the first turn is my Deathwalkers. Deathwalker heals. I have Fluid Knight. I don't really benefit a tremendous amount from killing this ruined machine, though. All I really achieve is it gets replaced with a different ruined machine, which has more health. Or not more health, um, more damage is the more relevant thing. So probably what I'm going to do is just use Fluid Knight on this robotic bolt shooter. So I will mark it for death. I will gain an experience. I will hit it for hopefully a crit. The plus zero is fine too. <laughs> that does put it on five. It is much closer to being done. And then uh, I could burn deepening despair to go just stand in front of them. Kind of a wild thing to imagine. Um, oh, my drifter gets to stand here because the mobilize wears off. Okay, okay. So I don't really need to worry about that too much. I guess I will move forward. The wraith is very irritating. It keeps on stopping me from being able to click on my Deathwalker. And call that a turn. Like, fine. <laughs> okay, so my drifter very much doesn't have a thing here. I can't use a move ability on a card. I guess what I'm going to do here instead of healing is I'll take two shield. I can't use this move ability because I'm immobilized. But now having done that, I'm no longer immobilized. Um, probably I should use Amulet of Life and Healing Potion right now. Heal for four. 
command range of this banner? No. Okay. Uh, and that's my turn. I have two shield and a retaliate. And then banner spear is going to go next. And we're going to grant three allies within four range moves of two. Or are we going for two allies? No, I think three allies. First I heal. Um, then I will also regroup my drifter. We have regen. Good luck keeping that, though. And then I'll give three allies within four range moves of two. So drifter takes this move. And a result of that is... We no longer have sustained momentum. It is done. But we have made a move for four this round. And crucially, my mastery here, never perform a move ability or attack with a value less than four and perform at least one move or attack ability each round. It's each round, not on each of your turns. So the fact that I didn't on my turn doesn't matter. That's a one ally within four. And I'll move the banner of hope through the door and the banner of strength through the door. Or is it better, perhaps, to... Let's not move the Banner of Hope through the door, and let's put our Bone Shaper here. I think that's better. Stop them from moving forward, because we want to make sure that they are all uh, back here still. Okay, Banner Spear is done. The Ruined Machines go. So this tile is empty. But here's the thing, they can't draw a line to any tile they can attack from. So actually every single one of them fails to find a tile they can attack from and they just don't move. Um, this one goes first, I guess, and attacks my Drifter for two. My Drifter does have shield. Okay. Right. Deals zero damage and takes one retaliate. And then this one goes and attacks my Drifter for one. Deals zero damage and takes one retaliate. So that was not bad at all. That part of the turn was excellent. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling justified in not being too worried about these ruined machines. If I can just kind of hold the line here. Um, oh, this shadow got used. If I can hold the line here, good things may happen. That's the ruined machines. Uh, Bone Shipper goes before the robotic bolt shooter. I didn't realize that. Look at this huge heal I have that I absolutely am not using in any way. Um, what are they doing? They are just attacking regular amount. A problem with that is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's fine, actually. So first my Wraith is going to go, and it chooses to attack a Ruined Machine because they went earlier in the turn. Minus one on an attack for two, deals one damage. Then... My Banner Sphere is at nine. I am at eight. I think I'm going to use Transfer of Essence to full heal my Banner Sphere. I take two. And then I'll also use Decaying Will to attack this for one and apply poison to it. It is with disadvantage, so it's just for one. It's now poisoned. And then the robotic bolt shooters go. So they're attacking four targets, four threes. This one, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, they're both within range of four targets also. So we'll do number two first. It's going to first target my Deathwalker. This is with disadvantage, crit miss. Then it'll target my, oh. It has to minimize the number of enemies it's attacking with disadvantage, so it can't attack my Bone Shaper. But it can attack my Banner of Strength instead of my Wraith. So I'll do that, it'll attack my Banner of Strength. Minus one, yeah, if that was a plus one, Banner is dead. Getting a bit lucky sometimes. Uh, Drifter. Plus zero, so that does hit for one, which gets rid of my regen, despite the fact that I had shield. And then my banner spear, plus two. Ow. 
Is it too late to use crude hide armor? I guess I have a heater shield. Honestly, I have this. Let's just use death proof charm. Yeah. May have changed my mind. No, I'm done. I have this. It heals me. I don't know. <laughs> um. Okay. So that was one of them done, right? Yeah. Next, this one goes. So it will first attack my drifter. It's plus one on that attack, so it's for two. Then it attacks my Bone Shaper, Deathwalker, and Banner Spear. We'll go Banner Spear first. Plus zero. I should at some point use my Heater Shield, I think. Uh, Deathwalker, plus zero. You're on one. And Bone Shaper, plus one. Yeah, so those are the problem. <laughs> the, other, the Ruined Machines don't matter. But those hit kind of hard. Hopefully this turn will be less, uh, less me exploding than that one was. I'm going to grab a short rest with my Banner Spear, who is down to four cards. I'm going to feel a little uncomfortable. Uh, actually, do I need Javelin? Do I have a ranged attack other than that? I have Pinning Charge. Uh... Ooh, I don't know. I don't think Javelin solves the problem, so I, I guess that's fine. There do seem to be problems here, though. Also, short resting with Deathwalker, who is running out of cards. Why do I have all the cards in my in play still? Oh. Oh, because I'd already played cards for the turn. I'm sorry, my mistake. This was my Deathwalker's turn. This was my... Yeah, okay, my bad. Okay, that explains why... Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, we're short resting with my Banner Spear. What I'd kind of like to do... I'd kind of like to get a banner within range of my Drifter so I can use Fortitude, which is a ranged attack for three to attack here. Actually, because it's poisoned, does that already count? Maybe that already counts because it's poisoned. Um, yeah. I think it probably does. Let me look up poison real quick to see exactly what it says. All attacks targeting the figure gain plus one damage. Okay. So if I fortitude... At a, as a ranged attack against an enemy with poison, it is an attack for four. So it does work for my mastery. I would kind of like to get a banner next to you first so that it can be an attack for five because that's how much health it has. So maybe we do that somehow, yeah? I'm almost certain that when I tried to fix that, I ruined my elements. Because I pretty intentionally remember setting these elements up. It's kind of a moment where it might be worth going back and checking. Um, well, let's see if it matters. Okay, round 17. Round 17? Like, that's late. That's late in a fight, so... Yeah, my characters are running out of cards. There just aren't that many left. I want to deal 24 to this and go get a chest still. Uh, I am going to spawn two ruined machines. Except I can't. I can only spawn one. We are now maxed out on ruined machines. That is the full complement of 12. Okay, let's start the round and see what's happening. Oh. Oh. Is that bad? <laughs> I have to look at what order they move in. So one fails, then two explodes. 
Three is here. Four is here. Six can't get there. Then seven goes. Okay, so two goes, then five goes, and seven goes, and ten goes. That is pretty bad. What are the bolt shooters doing? Attacking with Pierce. Okay. Um. Eggs. Well. We'll see. I might be a little bit dead here. Uh, I'm going to grant. Okay, first, you heal. Next, I grant two allies within three range moves of three. One, two, three. One, two. And then I use at all costs. Oh, actually, the banner of strength should have healed from the banner of hope. So I don't think I have to pay to heal it. But one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Do have to heal all of those. Okay. So a little bit less dead. Uh, Wraith attacks the robotic bolt shooter first for my bone shaper's turn. Plus one on an attack that was already hitting for three, so that's four. Pretty good. Um, time to use Bone Dagger aggressively, maybe? I mean, I kind of have to kill things. Or they are going to kill me. I do heal one. I can use Fell Remedy, bottom half of Bone Dagger, and then my. I don't have the bow? I do have the bow. So I can hit. Oh no, you're out of range. But I could hit like this and this. You know what would be really funny? If I teleported into the middle of all the machines to make them explode on my Deathwalker. How many cards do I have left? Zero? Okay, so that's a pretty bad play. <laughs> it would be very funny though. Still trying to work out my boom shaper. What I'm thinking is my drifter has a lot of cards and a good amount of health. The play might be to walk backwards with my bone shaper and let my drifter take a bunch of damage. And that's just kind of my drifter's job. How many cards do I have in hand this turn? Three. Uh, I don't have any items. But like three cards, that's a lot of cards. I think that should be okay. You know, another possibility, I just run away. I think I'd, I'd like them to all explode though. This ruined machine does not have regen. I'm not sure where that happened. How many cards do you have? Two... You've still got quite a few. Okay. I'm going to use the top half of Bone Dagger, which is attacking this for six. I just want those dead. Plus zero. Okay, it's dead. Uh, it was not marked for death. It was not marked for death. And then I'm going to use bottom half of Fell Remedy just to move. We move back, and everything will just explode on my drift there. Like, literally everything, though. Uh, speaking of my Drifter, I'm making an attack with Fortitude at range. So this has 5 health, and I'm attacking it for 5 with the Banner of Strength and the Poison on it. Plus 0, it's dead, too. Okay, that one was marked for death. 
So we can put a shadow down. Uh, I'll put it here. Somebody need to attack the objective for 24. <laughs> um, I heal also from this banner. And... Okay, that was Fortitude. I can move if I want. And go pick up the loot. It's a move of four, so I'm allowed to make it. Oh, I could move here, and then more things would explode. That would kill Ruined Machine number one as well. I'm on 12. Trap damage is six. Hmm, that's awkward. So I can absorb one trap damage, but then after that I start having to burn cards. How far are they moving? They're moving two. If my Deathwalker kills this, then this just moves in instead. Although this one has 13 health, so getting it dead is kind of nice. We are cleaning up the enemies pretty well. It's at the cost of a lot of cards, but getting the enemies dead is nice and sets us up to be able to kill the objective. Yeah, I'm still just wondering if I want to move. I think also being by the Banner of Hope for later is kind of nice. This is a Bone Shaper on 6 health. I don't really... It's unfortunate that you're not on 7, isn't it? Um, I think I'm good to just stay here. Got a loot? Why'd I get a loot? should not have gotten a loot, right? Why was there loot here? I killed a bolt shooter there, a bolt shooter there. I was standing here last turn. There can't be loot. That's very weird. Some of the things that have happened this mission have been weird. <laughs> um, I don't know how this enemy got regen. I don't know how I copied three of these. I don't know how I just picked up loot. <laughs> okay, whatever. It's, um, it's 2 a.m., so... The likely answer is just that I'm doing weird stuff. My Deathwalker is on four and has no cards, so moving forward is not an option here, unfortunately. I could crit. I guess I try to crit. So I'm attacking this for four base. Crit. Mm. Nope. And surely I've used my crude bow and just forgot it to mark that I used it at this point. I, I don't believe that I still have the crude bow. <sighs> Did I long rest? I long rested. I do have the crude bow. Um... Okay, let's hit that then. Actually, yeah, I want to hit this. Um, I'm, I'm, I didn't realize that I could do that. I want the plus one on the attack on this, though, obviously. Minus one? Okay, it's on one. Cool. <sighs> on the bright side, the robotic bolt shooters are done. Now the ruined machines go. So this is going to make a move toward enemies. Then number two goes. Number two explodes. Oh, it attacks first? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, I didn't actually realize that. Okay, minus one modifier at least, so it deals one and then explodes and deals six. All right, that was number two. Number three, they should all be here. Number four, number five, plus one modifier. And this is an elite. Ouch. 
And then it explodes, and we have to burn a card. Six, can't move closer. Seven. Have to burn a card. I think my drifter might be exhausted. Then it explodes and I have to burn a card. Eight. Can move closer like that. Nine can move closer like that. Ten. I have to burn two cards. I have failed. <laughs> I have failed in my quest. It explodes, my drifter dies. Okay, well, that was <laughs> a pretty impressive way to fail at the quest I was going for. Um, I think the goal now is just to kill the objective, right? Like, I, I just have to kill the objective before I actually lose the mission. Is this a good turn? It looks good enough. Is this a good turn? Arguable. I'm gonna go for it. And then I need, I guess, a short rest with my Deathwalker, which will leave me with four cards left. All right. Losing Restless Spirits. Kind of feels like my best card. I'm going to lose uh, Strength of the Abyss instead. That's fine. I don't think I'm getting the chest. Am I getting the chest? If I'm getting the chest, it's like, oh, it's kind of out of line. It's by using Restless Spirits to move the shadow and then teleporting to it. It feels very out of line. I'm basically in this situation where I'm very nearly dead and choosing within this situation to use one of my characters to do nothing except get loot. Because this turn I just don't have a turn if I go for that. I guess I could do something else this turn and then go for it next turn, maybe. Not really. Uh, how good are my other characters at dealing 24 damage here? So I do have Head of the Hammer, if I can get in range of it. Which I may be able to do. Unfortunately, like, my Banner Spear has to stop the rest of them from getting through. It doesn't even have that much health, although I have um, I have pretty decent survivability here, don't I? Okay. Um, yeah, I just I have to stop them from moving past this line because I can't have like another 13 health worth of enemy to kill after I deal 24 to that. Starts to get to be a problem. If I don't pick up the chest, hmm. feels kind of bad. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock in these cards and we're going to see what the enemies are doing. And then maybe from there, I will have a better idea. Feels like what I have to do. Round 18. First thing that happens in round 18 is two more of them spawn. Oh, they're exploding again. Is that... How good or bad is that? <laughs> One, three, two... Four.
How many cards do I have? Zero, zero, two. I have a summon. Okay, I think that's pretty bad. Although, I do get to tank a bit of it with summons. I get to tank like all of it with summons maybe? This one goes first, kills that. One, two, three, four. Maybe what my Deathwalker is actually doing is uh, teleporting in to die here and just try to buy time for my Bone Shaper and Banner Spear to kill the objective. Maybe we're giving up on the chest. I heal for one. This is four and this is three. So three can move here and this can move here. Okay. Okay, I think this is okay. I'm going to move Banner Spear here, which channels wind and then pinning charge is just an attack for three on the objective. Plus one. For four. And that's your turn. Uh, next, Deathwalker. Four damage isn't bad. That's like, that's damage. <laughs> we did something. Um, yeah, Deathwalker. It's real hard not to just take the five damage on the objective here. What if the chest is really good? No, I think it's time to just go for five damage on the objective. Six damage on the objective. Cool. I got an experience. It's a 14 health just like that. Okay, Bone Shaper's move, Wraith moves, doesn't do anything. Bone Shaper is summoning a skeleton, which is actually kind of crucial. And also the skeleton can loot three for me. Oh, four. Wow. Oh yeah, because of what happened on that tile last turn, I remember now. One, two, three... Four. So, I just found Arrow Vine. Assuming that I actually uh, win the mission, that is a retirement for my Bone Shaper. My Deathwalker also has retirement, and my Banner Spear can get retirement if I want. Uh, Muckduck will be level 4 with 3 level 1 companions next mission, I think. That's... That's going to be a lot of learning for me all at once. Uh, very good though, very good. So Bone Shaper is done, and now the Ruined Machines go. This, again. This moves here and attacks. Oh, it failed, it drew a curse. I mean, doesn't really matter, it just explodes and kills anyway. And then I discard this. Oh, and I should delete these. Number three moves. Nope, number two moves. Can't get closer. Number three moves and can get closer. I'm going to put it there so that when number four moves and tries to get closer, it can only move one closer. Five isn't here. Six, seven isn't here. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, so there's only one of them past the zone that I care about them passing. Yeah, 
that is slightly worse than zero of them being past it, but like, you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, okay, if we go into round 19, unreal. Mission's still going, huh? I need a short rest with my banner spear. The question is, can I engineer a way to head of the hammer before my banner spear dies? I still have decent defensive stuff, right? Yeah, I have explosive vial. Okay. So this turn, I am going to go for regroup and head of the hammer. My Bone Shaper still has eight cards. Uh, Bone Shaper just is kind of obscene. Four health. Um, I'd like to be able to summon a Skeleton, I guess. I think I lose that, because I'm pretty sure I only have one summon Skeleton left. Unfortunately, that was a low initiative card, and I kind of also wanted a low initiative card. But yeah. We will go for the lowest initiative available and make a skeleton. And with my death walker, I'm just going to walk in so that my banner spear can walk in front of me and do the thing. At 14. Uh, I think on average it ends this turn on one. I believe, if my math is right. Oh, that's without considering that the attack modifier decks are better than plus zero at this point. Ruined machines are moving and attacking. That is that is so extremely okay. That is a lot less to deal with than the other stuff I've been dealing with them doing. So Deathwalker is moving here, and then we're using Forceful Spirits to attack the objective for two, plus zero, and I will also attack this Ruined Machine right in front of my face with disadvantage, plus zero. So they both take two. Done. Next is my Banner Spear. With my Banner Spear, I'm going to use the bottom half of Regroup to move, and then I'm going to use Head of the Hammer, which gives me three experience when I use it, and attacks the objective for seven. And please don't miss. Oh. Well, that sure wasn't a miss. You're dead, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead, uh, you're dead. You're dead. And I got another debris. It's <laughs> a rotate sixty degrees. Does that seem like it isn't sixty degrees to anybody else? Look, eventually I'm going to work this out, okay? We won the mission, is the good news. There you go. The room's closed off. We just have to finish killing one thing. Uh, Bone Shaper goes. My Wraith attacks for two. I am summoning a Skeleton. Oh, I heal for one at the start of the turn. I also have you heal for one. I also have you heal for... Or you're dead. Uh, <laughs> also have you heal for one. Um, yeah, I'm going to summon a skeleton here. And I'm going to take two and gain an experience and walk two to here to loot. Because there are still a couple of cards left in the loot deck. 
And even though I'm retiring, all of these cards will get put into the town supply when I retire. Okay, the Ruined Machine is going to attack my Deathwalker for two. And on the next turn, presumably, I sure hope I will manage to kill it. So I'm declaring a long rest with my Banner Spear because otherwise I won't have any cards. I can short rest with the Deathwalker. I guess it would be novel to complete our combat goal of 13 or more experience, but since we're retiring anyway, it doesn't feel like it matters that much. Mostly my Bone Shaper just has still got you know, enough cards to kill five enemies or something. Is the room empty of loot? There's loot there. Can I have my summon loot for me? I can. Okay. I have two summons. Yeah. Uh, Ruined Machine is moving and attacking Deathwalker. This is at nine. Okay, I will move here and attack it. Bone Shaper, my Wraith attacks. My Skeleton attacks. I won. Oh, there's two loot patches there. Okay, I'm going to Grant one of my summons a loot ability. Get two more loot. Is that the loot deck? That's the loot deck. What a mission. Wow. I've just been having so much fun with these. Like, they're all different from each other. They're all really good. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. They're all just great. I'm going to read the outro here. And then I have so much bookkeeping to do that I think the next episode is just going to be bookkeeping. It's, um, I mean, is it even bookkeeping? It's like retiring the characters, getting new characters, finding out what it means to retire a character. There's a lot of cool stuff happening right now. I'm reading 16.1. Well, that is a lot to read. Machines and more machines, what you wouldn't give for an enemy that simply bled. But with the tunnel smashed and the room cleared out, the tide of metal creatures finally comes to an end. As you wipe the sweat and dust from your brow, an odd high-pitched noise begins to fill the air. You clear out your ears, but the noise persists. It almost sounds like words. I say, down here, friends, the noise says again. You look down and discover that the source is actually a quattro. The man is tucked at the far end of the tunnel, imprisoned in a small segment of tubing. Several bars of scrap metal have been forced over the entrance in order to create rudimentary cage. Well, I should say, quite a fight you gave those machines, the Quattro says. He appears to be in good humor despite his obviously poor condition. His shirt sleeves and pant legs are all so frayed that bits of fabric hang down like moss. His breathing, too, is ragged, his chest rising and falling with a labored wheeze. In any case, I'm mighty pleased to see you all. I quite expected my rescue party sooner, but this should do well. With a bit of effort, you pry the Quattro loose, and as soon as he's free, watch him stretch with genuine pleasure. Ah, then. Now we can have a proper introduction. He extends a long, delicate hand. Crane to linger at your service. You introduce yourselves, explaining that while you aren't a rescue party per se, you're happy to lend a hand, and you ask how he came to be caged so far below ground. You learn through an exceedingly self-important lecture that Crane is an academic who ventured down here one year ago on an ill-advised solitary exploration. He was eventually captured by the machines and has been kept prisoner ever since. You ask whether he knows another way out of this complex other than that infernal elevator. I should say I do, the Quattrall, says the Quattrall, nodding emphatically. I've been here a year and um, and am well versed in this place, and the unfettered have a dozen, dozen little ways to ingress and egress as they please. You stop him for a moment and question this term. The unfettered? Oh yes, right. Well, that's what they've named themselves, you see. The machines, that is. Unfettered. They were built long ago by an elder civilization, you see. Crane dives back into his prison cell and pries up a piece of bent metal to reveal a hidden stash. When he reemerges, he's holding a sheaf of folded pages that look to be cut from a larger text. They left a history, whoever they were, and they were kind enough to record some of their thoughts, and although their script is quite archaic, I think I've got the general idea through some of the illustrations. 
Now, originally it would appear that these ancient engineers created the machines as a source of cheap labor, but in the years since, it would seem that the machines have found a way to keep themselves in operation without anyone around to command them, hence their name. Crane pauses for you to look impressed with his theory. A piece of dead machine clatters to the ground. Anyway, more troubling than that is that these machines appear to be planning something, perhaps an assault, if you want my opinion, and judging by their numbers, I don't know that any force above ground is prepared to take them out. By this ominous utterance, the Quattrill groans and holds his head. Oh my, I think I spent too much time in that cage. Crane stumbles and collapses to the ground. If you want any more information out of him, it's probably best to bring him back to Frosthaven and give him some time to recover. We get two collective lumber, two collective metal. I'm going to put that on my drifter, the only character who isn't about to retire. And we lock out the Quattrill Library, which I think might happen if I just click Scenario 1. Gives me too much experience, so I'm going to take a little bit of experience off. Ooh, my Deathwalker perfectly leveled up as well. Um, did that lock out the Quattro Library? It did not. Okay. So eventually we're going to unlock this mission. Uh, that's what we're putting something in the calendar for. I'm just going to put a decal here that says can't do that. Over here, can't do this, already did this. And it said to put in the calendar at four weeks, 128.2. Four weeks, one, two, three, four, 128.2. All right. Um, let's do a little bit of the bookkeeping now. I'm just going to do it on camera because it's kind of cool to see how much we got. Be targeted by attacks from three or more enemies in the same round. Did that happen? I'm not sure that it did. It doesn't really matter because I'm retiring. <laughs> uh, have zero cards in your hand each time you rest. I have no idea if that happened. I don't think it did. I would have had to think about it and I wasn't. Slowpoke I succeeded at. So, like, yay. Um, almost got all the perk marks before retirement. Workhorse I did not succeed at. And let's, uh, yeah, take a look at this loot deck. My Banner Spear got two gold. Nice. <laughs> My Drifter got two gold. Nice. My Deathwalker got... Uh, it's actually, sorry, it's nine gold because the exchange rate changed. One more per coin since I'm at level four missions now. Okay, and then my Bone Shaper got this. Without 15 cards, surely it could have spread out better. So. Looks like two lumber, three metal, arrow root, arrow vine, and rock root. Arrow vine, rock root, two lumber, three metal, and two, three, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirty gold. <laughs> wow, not bad at all. Okay, so those are the rewards for the mission. That was a lovely little expedition. And next episode, we're going to head back to town. We're going to read an outpost event, and then I'm going to retire three characters and replace them with a Blink Blade, a Geminate, and a Snow Dancer. So, yeah. Um, we're just going to work out what those characters do kind of live together. Uh, I think some of you won't like this, but... Um, that's okay, you can skip the video. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to just like live record me responding to seeing their cards for the first time without um without like a bunch of editing or anything like that, because I think some people will be really interested in that. For some people, that's probably the most interesting part of the entire series. Anyway, I will see you next time.